Hi all of you, the most awaited exam of NEET SS 2023, the announcement has come and uh, National Board of Examination has announced uh, this exam will be conducted in the month of September 2023. The date will be September 9th and September 10th. So all those who have been waiting for it, the wait is over and uh, the exam date is announced and uh, you can start the final preparation and those who are on long term preparation can go for final revision and to get ready for this exam. So is it doable in last 30 days, almost we have 30 days. So is it doable in 30 days? Is it possible to start now and to finish? Uh, are there any examples for it? I mean this is the question asked to me. So there are two things we are going to I mean, discuss here. One, I mean so far I have not anything, done anything because the announcement has come. Now my mind says, I mean can I start my preparation and finish my preparation and appear for this exam. Now I, I have experienced through uh, many students through this of last 30 days and last 15 days before the exam start and finish. So one student asked me, sir, can I start now? Fresh. I have not done anything so far. Can I start now? And can I finish? I mean, do I have any chances of getting a good score and speciality of my choice and a good institution? Of course, yes. How? See, try to understand for those students who start now for one month or 15 days before exam, you need to do for full time. You need to do for full time. You need to apply leave uh, from where you are working. And minimum of, you need to work for 12 hours, minimum of 10 to 12 hours. Work for continuous of, of say 15 days means continuous 15 days. That means you have to land up in almost 150 to 180 hours of watching all the videos uh, in speed learning app once. All the videos of your speciality. Yes, suppose your general medicine or general surgery or anesthesia or OG, you need to watch those videos which are concerned for your super speciality exam, you need to watch it once completely. And uh, I have uh, advised this to students earlier, they have watched once and I have revised those e-notes which are there in the PowerPoint slides in the book session three times and uh, an all grand test once. So last NEET SS 2022 and I have seen couple of examples like this where the student just started 15 days before uh, the exam and few students started after the announcement is one month before the exam. They did once the video once at 1.5 or 2x speed and depending on their comfortability and they revised this notes, e notes three times and gave the GTs once. There are 15 GTs average. They did once and they scored. They didn't score rank number one. They scored very good rank, yes, a decent rank and uh, that helped them to get the speciality they wanted and a good institution of their choice. So this is definitely uh, possible and doable and uh, only thing is you need to conceive this and you need to understand by yourself that you need to dedicate for the rest of the time that is available for this purpose and it is doable and because people have done already and it can be uh, followed and you can also do it. And the next question which I'm going to answer is, sir, I have done one year of preparation. There are students who have done two years of preparation, but not a respectful score so far in uh, previous NEET SS or last in ESS. But I wanted a good score and I want this speciality in a good institution. Is it possible? What am I supposed to do? See, if you have done a one year of preparation or six months of preparation or last five to six months of preparation or three months of preparation, whatever it might be, you make sure that you have done all the videos in speed learning app at least once. And when you are given a last grand test, you see which all areas you are weak and those mistakes which all areas you have made. Those areas you just kindly mark down or bookmark and those topics you go back and see the videos once again. Yes, then I mean first address your weaker areas. Suppose of 150 questions, you have made 100 correct and 50 not correct. So 50 topics, you are weak. So those 50 topics address first. So, so go back and mark those areas and see those videos first. And once you have done it, take one more grand test following that and see out of 150 how much you are able to get. And you will get another 20 or 30 fresh areas you are weak. 
or 40 of fresh urea is weak. Again, you go back and address those areas. So, do it for 3 or 4 grand tests to identify the weaker areas. Address those areas and reread those areas, re revise those areas, and make sure that your weaker areas are addressed first. And make sure that your grand test scores are comfortably little above 120 questions in speed. So, that because the speed exams are a little tougher than the actual exam. So, if you could take more than 120, it is something equal to taking more than 140 in real exams. So, once you have done it, you just revise those PowerPoint slides which are used to take the classes by the faculties which are loaded in the ebook session. Just revise it just before the exam. You can scroll through the before the exams and give the grand exams at least once of all the grand 15, 15 grand exams once and definitely you will be able to make it for all those students who are preparing little longer and been preparing continuously. So, with that, I'm telling you, all these exams which are appearing yearly once or twice or doable exams, as much as dedication and sincerity you can give for the exam and exam will surely give back to you. In my experience of teaching uh, many students, I mean, I can tell you, your sincere efforts and hard work will definitely get you through a success. And uh, I always say, uh, I mean, work in silence, let the results make more noise. And there is one more saying my always my student used to tell me, it is better to bleed for success than cry of failures. So all that you can do for last 30 days, you kindly do. Examination 100% will give back to you. A sincere, a dedicated effort has never ever failed. Understand this. A sincere, a dedicated effort have never failed in my experience. So if you have given your dedicated effort, let you start on day one here, already you have started, whatever might be, from last 30 days and the day of the exam matters. So, this last 30 days or 15 days, yes, one week and a day of the exam matters a lot to consolidate what you have learned so far and to put on into that rate of an exam to make it a successful is all in your hands and definitely it is doable and thousands of students have done it and I have seen, uh, I mean, uh, they have been successful and you will also be successful in that. So, you are no less than anyone else. So, do not try to categorize yourself that I can't do it, he can do it and he is from that institute, I am from this institute. It does not matter at all. It's going to be in a one exam and everybody is equally deserving and you have all the capabilities. You have all the capabilities like anyone and you can definitely uh, do it and achieve it. Just be focused. Keep looking at your exam date. Is it on 9th September? or 10th September depending on to the group that you belong to and just be on that date, yes, and be focused on that date and give the best exam on the date for that date before whatever the days and the time that is available, but put into best practice and best practice and a dedicated effort definitely results are on your side and I will see all of you and, and those who are into this process to be successful, yes, and definitely be successful. In my experience, I mean, I have seen all our students in speed have all taken very good uh, scores and seats of their choice and those who have little uh, not taken to the seat of their choice, they have reworked the process and they have scored what they wanted. So, it is doable and definitely as a team, as a team, as both the faculty members and with all the team or behind you and with you and definitely you can ask us whatever that you need and help, definitely we are here to help you out. We will quickly go on to the important dates of this exam and important aspects and eligibility criteria for this exam. Then NEED SS 2023 information bulletin and uh, it says the online uh, application submission starts on 27th July 2023 and uh, from 3 p.m. onwards. So, probably all of you would have been logged in and tried to register. And, and this up to 16th of August 2023 up to 11.55 p.m. And the edit window of all applicants starts from 19th August to 21st August, okay. And uh, final edit window to rectify the revision incorrect images, no further opportunity shall be given for photograph or signature or thumb impression like that. That is from 26th August 2023 to 28th August 2023. Issue of admit card is on 4th September 2023. Examination date, very, very, very important. Examination date is 9th and 10th of September 2023. So, two dates are very, very important. One, the last date. Once the last date is the 16th August 
So don't wait till 16th August, finish everything on 15th August itself. 15th August, that is Independence Day. So by Independence Day, the application closes, you have that idea. So that though you have one day, but don't take till the last minute. So 16th August is the last date. So you keep for all practical purpose is our Independence Day, August 15th. And there's a closing date for your submission of your application online. And then the examination date is on 9th and 10th of September 2023. That depends on what specialty that you're going to choose. And the cutoff for the dates for qualifying MD or MS or DNB broad specialty qualification towards the determination of eligibility for appearing in ESS 2023 is 30th September 2023. Declaration of results is on 30th September 2023. Commencement of academic year session is on 15th October. And last date for which students can be admitted and join is 31st October. So everything gets over by 31st October. Very clear, all the important dates. Right. So last date of submission of application is on 16th August and the examination date is on 9th and 10th September 2023. Right. So let us try to understand the important aspects of this exam. So marking schemes, there shall be 25% of negative marking for incorrect answers. Very, very important. So correct response will have four marks. Incorrect response have minus one. One will be detected and unattempted has zero. Very clear. So to my experience of handling students for 20 years and I could tell you uh, what is the number of a percentage of questions to be attended in these exams, it should be more than 95%. So 95% out of 150 questions, you should minimum attempt 140 plus, understand this, 140 plus and the safe will be 145 and the safest will be 150 out of 150, nothing bad is going to happen by attempting maximum number of questions. Because positive is 4, negative is only 1. So when you attempt, yes, there are 4 times that you have a chances to get more marks when it becomes correct. And the chance of getting negative is only 1. So positive is more than the negative. So maximum number of attempts and maximum number of questions you should give in this exam. Okay. So that works for the, all the toppers. It's not only my uh, philosophy. I have spoken almost to thousands of toppers in the interview in YouTube you can see. And all of them have referred to more than 95% of questions and attempts that they have made in the exam. Understood? Right. So you have to attend maximum number of questions. Now, if you want to do any of those clinical specialties in DM, especially cardiology and hemat clinical hematology or immunology, rheumatology, critical care, endocrinology, medical and um, gastroenterology, hepatology, infectious disease or medical genetics and medical oncology and nephrology, neurology, and you should have completed either MD or DNB general medicine. Or if you want to do any of this clinical specialty, you don't belong to a medical group. That means MD general medicine or DNB general medicine. Still, you can appear for this exam, but the only thing is you need to prepare a Harrison 21st edition. Understood? Because a lot of uh, students who are in anesthesia, they will be interested in doing critical care medicine. But uh, it is not that the anesthesia questions will be asked, the medicine questions will be asked and tested for critical care. Uh, medicine uh, entry for DM and critical care. So you have to prepare as students are preparing for medical group. So all those students of MD general medicine or DNB general medicine are eligible for DM superficiality in this clinical specialties. Okay. Now let's go to the next big specialty is the surgical group. Those students have completed MS or DNB general surgery are eligible for MCH, cardiovascular and thoracic and uh, pediatric cardiothoracic, pediatric surgery, surgical gastroenterology, hepatopancreatic baby surgery, neurosurgery, plastic and reconstructive surgery, urology, vascular surgery, surgical oncology, endocrinology and thoracic surgery. Why am I reading all these specialties? Because each and every one of you will be interested in, will be interested in some of these specialties. Okay. And, and you would have uh, been in the final year or a completed or the MS general surgery or DNB general surgery, you want to proceed to do an MCH course in superficiality of your choice. Now, all those in pediatrics and pediatric or MD or uh, DNB pediatrics, I mean, it's a common paper 150 on uh, PG exit level standard and, and the merit, as per the merit list, you can choose either neonatology or pediatric hepatology or nephrology or oncology, neurology, cardiology, gastroenterology or critical care. It's going to be a common paper and based on the merit list, you can choose any of the specialties. Okay. Now, ops gynae and obstetric gynecology and going to be the uh, MD or MS or DNB Ops Gynecology students or completed, they will be able to uh, get into gynec oncology or reproductive medicine or surgery and other common paper. So, 150 questions on common Ops Gyne and two specialty they can choose in MCH. And orthopedic group, uh, I mean MS or DNB orthopedic students are eligible for MCH, hand surgery and pediatric orthopedics. And anesthesia group, 
and those students who have uh, completed their MD or DNB anesthesiology are eligible uh, for appearing this common anesthesia group 150 questions and they can choose a specialty of DM cardiac anesthesia or neuro anesthesia or organ transplant anesthesia critical care. It is organ transplant anesthesia and critical care, it is not critical care medicine and pediatric or neonatal anesthesia. Next group is the radio diagnosis group it's for intervention radiology. Those radiology students are completed may you know want to wish to get on to the interventional DM neuro radiology, interventional radiology has to appear for radio diagnosis group of 150 questions on radiology. Respiratory medicine group of uh, those students on pulmonology of MD and DNB respiratory medicine completed and pulmonary medicine of DM and microbiology group and I mean those on microbiology MD or DNB can go for DM virology. And pathology similarly pathology students can go for DM oncopathology, psychiatric group students can go for DM geriatric mental health and child and adolescent psychiatry and those on pharmacology group can go for DM clinical pharmacology and ENT group can go for MCH head and neck surgery, very clear. Now it comes which is the date we need to uh, be very very careful on this and the timing is very very important for you. So 9th September uh, the people are going to take all the ENT group, respiratory medicine group, Opsgani group, orthopedic group on 9th. So, the morning shift is for the ANT respiratory medicine on OPS gynae is morning from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in the morning shift and those in the orthopedic group will go for 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon shift. Then comes the 10th September where the medical group students can go for the, the students who are doing MD general medicine or DNB general medicine or aspiring for DM clinical specialties morning shift from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and in the afternoon shift the, the radio diagnosis, microbiology, pathology, psychiatry, surgical group, pediatric group and anesthesiology group and pharmacology group. So, all these groups are going to take the exams on 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon shift. Very clear. So, morning shift, so time schedule for examination for the different uh, shifts shall be under uh, 9th and 10th and it has been given that if the exam is going to start at 9 a.m. and uh, the entry and registration starts from 7 a.m. for the morning shift students and for afternoon shift students it starts from 12 pm. So, just have an idea that means roughly you need to uh, go between uh, 2 hours before your exam to the examination center and because the entry and registration starts from that point of time. Okay? So, you can see the entry closes this is very very important entry closes for morning shift at 8 30 and afternoon shift by 1 30 and uh, grant of access to the candidate login starts by 8 45 and 145 for the afternoon shift and candidates log in to read instructions 850 and 150 for the afternoon shift and the exam starts sharp in the morning shift at 9 a.m. and in the afternoon shift at 2 p.m. Okay, and the examination end time is 11.30 a.m. and for the morning shift and 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon shift, the end time of the exam, very clear. So, the Registration for NEET SS, so I mean whatever the postgraduate courses that you have do, been doing in the final year are going to complete or already completed, for that particular group you need to take up the exam of the PG exit standard. Okay? So, here the examples are given like an OPS gynae or pediatric or general surgery it has been given and you can take your uh, speciality, your pediatric super speciality or OPS gynae super speciality of uh, gynec oncology or reproductive medicine or general surgery of any of MCA super specialty courses. In case if you are interested to take an additional course, for example, a, a pediatric student want to take an adult medicine, that is a clinical medicine of DM, then he has to apply separately in a medical group also. Similarly, if a surgery student wants to appear for head and neck surgery, then he has to take an additional on ENT group also. So, that depends. Suppose you want to do an orthopedic like a hand surgery or pediatric orthopedic, he has to go through pediatric final year. Uh, I mean uh, exit standard uh, level of preparation and he has to take those uh, application and pay the respective fees to be eligible for applying this exam. So, respective groups you can apply, suppose you want to take additional, uh, apply for additional superficiality then for that particular group you need to apply and uh, you have to register yourself. So, that is what this chart tells you. So, what are the documents that are required for the students on the test center? So, printed copy of barcoded or QR coded admit card and uh, photocopy of permanent, I mean SMC State Medical Council, Medical Council of India or NMC registration and uh, any one of the below mentioned government IDs, either PAN card or driving license or voter's ID or PAN card or other card you must carry to validate your entry. 
to the examination centers, I mean, I mean stretched uh, throughout the breadth and length of this country, from Ahmedabad to Bengaluru, and I mean the list is there, and you can go through it, and uh, the entire list, I mean all major cities, uh, the examination centers are available. It's going to be a computer-based exam, and definitely you can get into access. So admissions to DRNB superficiality courses is also through this uh, NEET SS 2023. So NEET SS 2023 is going to for MCH, DM and also for DRNB courses. Okay. So there shall be a common counseling for all super speciality. That means once the exam is over, DM, MCH and DRNB super speciality will be completed through this exam itself. So NEET SS 2023 at the national level to be conducted by the Medical Counseling Committee and the Directorate, uh, I mean, Directorate of General, Medi General of Health Services Government of India, so DGHS. So, NBEMS is offering uh, following DRMB superficiality courses for 2023 24 admission. And what are the courses it gives? So, these are the courses. Uh, these are the DRMB superficiality on cardiac anesthesia to cardiology to cardiovascular and thoracic surgery, clinical hematology, clinical immunology, rheumatology, critical care, uh, medicine, endocrinology, gynec oncology, infectious disease, interventional radiology, medical gastroenterology, medical genetics. Medical Oncology, Neonatology, Nephrology and Neuroanesthesia. And if you look into the rest of the courses like Neurology, Neurosurgery, Pediatric Cardiology, Pediatric Cardiac, I mean Critical Care, Pediatric Neurology, Pediatric Surgery, Plastic Reconstructive Surgery, Surgical Gastroenterology and Surgical Oncology, Thoracic Surgery, Urology and Vascular Surgery. Right? So, the examination uh, schedule dates, conduct of exam, we know that is 9th and 10th September and uh, I mean this earlier important dates we have seen and qualifying is on 30th and result declaration on 30th September and commencement of academic year is 15th October and last date for students admission is 31st October of this year. Now, what are the eligibility? What are the feeder branch and what are they eligible to apply for? So, anesthesia people, already we have seen this chart, anesthesia people, you see MD, I mean medical genetics, DM medical genetics, everybody can apply. So, anybody can apply for uh, medical genetics, whichever uh, postgraduate speciality you belong to, right? So, we have seen anesthesia people, they are eligible for all this, okay. And microbiology, I mean biochemistry, next is biochemistry. And biochemistry, students were asking me, uh, biochemistry, if I do an MD, will be do able to DM or DRNB? Yes, you can do clinical hematology and medical genetics. Medical genetics is universal, I mean anybody can apply. And MD or DNB, general medicine, I mean emergency medicine, uh, they can apply for critical care and medical genetics. And uh, ENT people can go for head and neck surgery, all of you know that. And we have done already MD and DNB general medicine people can go for all this adult clinical medicine. And also pediatric people also eligible for the clinical medicine, uh, DM or DRNB, but provided they need to go through uh, general medicine through Harrison 21st edition. And general surgery the same, MS or DNB general surgery, these are the MCH or DRNB superficiality they can apply for. And uh, wish you all the best and all the success for NEET SS 2023. Success is on your side, believe in yourself and uh, you are the best mentor for yourself. Yes, all the best to all of you.